So my name's Philip Heap, uh, I work for the FA, I'm the National Development Manager for the Disability Football Pathway and we're here in the experience area, FA Disability Cup Finals Weekend. It's a new addition for this year because we're really keen for people to be able to learn more about the different formats that are being played over the course of the weekend but also to experience them for themselves so to be able to actually have a go at playing amputee, blind, deaf, partially sighted and power chair football and we've also got our new female cerebral palsy development squad uh, who are going to be coming over the weekend to do an exhibition of cerebral palsy football because the only way that you, you're able to really appreciate how talented the players are that have reached the cup finals is to actually have a go at, at the different formats themselves because it's, it's incredibly difficult to play some of the formats so the skill levels and the ability that the players who have reached the finals have is, is, is immense. That experience area, such a great addition to the Disability Cup, and what a, a great addition to our lineup now. Because ahead of the Power Chair final, we've got two very special guests, Michael Owen and his son James, join us now. It's great to, to see you both here. And, and James, you've actually been along trying out the experience area. Um, I have, yeah. Um, we've been watching a few of the games, and it's been um, great, high quality. It's like they, um, it's people underestimate how how much time and effort they put into it and it's, it's to, to be honest it was more of a, like it was an eye-opener for me as well I didn't know they'll be such high um, quality they were really good mm. I've heard there was quite a lot of goals in it so yeah there was goals in the in the CP final it was amazing but tell us about the um, the experience area you tried power chair football did you what was that like yeah we did oh, um, I was going to answer that he's jumping <laughs> in yeah. just because he was better than me he's jumping in go yeah. on then tell yeah, how, you said how you should have been were. sent off <laughs> yeah. power chair Jesus they are very powerful you would yeah, underestimate how like fast they are we were only on um, like four four three yeah. like out of five in terms and of the power rating on them speed, yeah, yeah the speed yeah, like, yeah. yeah and I was doing wheelies and like wheel <laughs> spins I was going all over the place and um, ramming him into the grass you know but um, yeah it was it was great fun it was definitely an experience it's yeah another eye-opener it's just like how it was it was so like difficult mm. like it's um, when I've watched a few of the uh, power chair games and they're so precise and they yeah. pass and it goes like so they, make it look e they make it look easy. It don't looks they? so easy, yeah. but tell you what, when you're when you're doing it, I've, it's hard to even get. It's hard to pass at all. I miss a ball like ninety percent of the time, let alone be accurate. So it's. <laughs> and it's, I was worse than him. Yeah, <laughs> I can believe that, Mike. I can believe yeah. that. Michael, tell us a bit more about the the film that you're making with, with James for BT Sport. Yeah. So so James is partially sighted himself. James has got Stargardt's disease. So we've been following the partially sighted uh, England team, men's uh, team, for for some time now, and uh, it's going to culminate at the World Cup in this country amazingly uh, we are one of the better ta teams in the world mm. um, but it's just been an amazing journey it's been a real um, I don't know confidence booster I guess for James as well being in and around the team and training with him a bit and speaking to people that are also visually impaired yeah. um, and this is almost a bit of an extension of that you know to, to come and see some of our other England teams and as James rightly says the skill levels is quite incredible and I don't care what sport you like I can watch any sport if it's done really well yeah. Yeah. and that's what this is any sport that we've uh, that we've we've gone and watched I mean the, the the quality of it is quite incredible and then you try it yourself and it's practically impossible so hats off to them I mean, talk to us what it's like as a parent to have an event like this, you know, where you've got an avenue for your for your kids to come and express themselves. Well, it is because you can imagine when we first got to hear that, that James had a had a, a visual impairment um, and, you know, trying to get over that and trying to understand it and trying to make his life a bit better. Um, is all you want is for the, the, the best for, you, for your children, isn't it? I've got four children. Um, and James is perfect in, in absolutely every way, apart from his, his vision. And, uh, and to, to have options there for him, of course, he wants to do everything that I do. I've been lugging him around Ascot uh, all week, and I can't watch the racing because he's saying, right, which one of mine's winning? And I'm, I'm giving him a commentary. Um, but he can... He, we listen. We muddle through, and we can we can do absolutely anything. But yeah. sometimes there's some 
you know they want to be involved in, in it and they want to um, actively take part and and the participants here and their families because it's a it's 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 not easy on them as well mm. and everybody that makes it and bt for showing it you know it's it's absolutely brilliant it, it just it, you know it it gives visibility to everything as well james I mean, just tell us what what it was like for you taking part in the film but also getting that diagnosis and, and yeah. how you've had to adapt i mean i've had it since i was born which i would probably say would be lucky it's i've had more time to learn how to adapt to it and it's not like i've had anything taken away from me mm. but um i don't know the ins and outs i'm definitely not the right person to ask but um all i know is it's it doesn't affect day to day as much i find ways around it i can i've still i can still like be with my mates i can still go to Ascot and have a good time but it just means I can't might not be able to watch the game so I'd have to get an app to commentate or I might have to peck my dad said to like commentate for me tell me what's going on it's um it's just it's little things like that but I mean it's you definitely should be grateful I've been like brought up in a in a supporting family and environment so you definitely can't complain really I mean we're out here like you know spreading awareness to it so there we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, there you, you, go. you can hear the, the cheers, the <laughs> cheers there because uh, the mighty Newcastle oh, United coming out for the, course the power mighty chair, Newcastle United. chair final. They're, they're taking on Aspire. And, and Michael actually talking about that supportive family environment. It's your wedding anniversary today and it you've is, got a meal book for two o'clock. Congratulations, have, yeah. mate. We, yeah. we better let you go because we don't want you getting in trouble for that. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you both very much for, for supporting the, the Disability Cup this weekend and, and for coming on the show to, to chat to us as well. Thank yeah. you, Our James pleasure. and, and Michael. Here. Thank you. We'll take a, a quick break now and we'll build up to that power chair final as the players start their warm-up here at St George's Park.
Welcome back. It was three in a row for Northeastern Yorkshire in the cerebral palsy final here at St George's Park a little earlier. They beat Norwich 4-0 in a quality final with four brilliant goals to lift that trophy yet again. And coming up, as we see today, at, we've got Aspire PFC in the Power Chair Football Final against Newcastle United Foundation PFC at 12.40 uh, kicking off. And then after that, we've got that death final between Farsley Celtic Death FC and St John's Death FC. That's going to be a great match at 2.40 p.m. It really is, as is, I'm sure, the Power Chair Final. And here's what we can expect. Chair football is played by anyone who uses a powered or manual wheelchair. The game is played using a specially designed sports power chair. Each team is made up of four players with two halves of 20 minutes. Games are played on an indoor court with a larger ball and upright goal posts placed six meters apart. A push-in replaces throw-ins and tackling is only permitted using the playing attachment at the front of the player's chair. Yes, three-time winners at the FA Disability Cup. Aspire PFC and relative newcomers, Newcastle United Foundation PFC, are your finalists here in the Futsal Arena. And we're delighted to introduce our next guest. It's coach of Seven Oaks Power Chair Team, Adam McAvoy, is with us. Also your um, Football Association National Development Manager as well. Tell us a bit more about what that involves, Adam. So my role is based around uh, a lot of grassroots development, so introducing new people to the game, trying to create new clubs, provide opportunities uh, for competitive outlets at regional and national league, coach education as well, and try and be as, as well-rounded as possible to introduce people to the power chair format. Adam, give us a little idea of who can play power chair um, football and, and a little bit more in depth into the rules as well. So power chair football is open for anyone with a physical impairment. Uh, so we can have players playing at any level uh, and then as we progress through through regional and national level mm. at national league level so, we have so, so would I be able to play power chair football? Yeah, certainly you would at uh, regional level yeah. and then as we move through to national uh, level there's classification which obviously takes impairment into account uh, and we try and accommodate for the players that are more highly impaired uh, than others. So how did you first get involved in, in power chair? So I started over a decade ago, uh, worked in special needs education. A power chair football was the most popular after school club there. Uh, and that then progressed to becoming from a school team to a community team, which became Seven Oaks. Uh, and then from there, moving and working forward for the association uh, at both regional level and my role now is as national manager. And what's the, what's the state of the game at the moment in terms of numbers of teams and participation? Yes, yeah, certainly coming off the back of COVID, um, it's, it's getting healthier. So we now have 40 clubs nationally. Wow. Yep. Yeah. And of those uh, clubs, some of them have multiple teams. So we have over 100 teams. We've got over 500 players, the length and breadth of the country. Six regional competitions, uh, a two-tiered national league. And obviously we're here today for the cup as well. We certainly are. And we've got relative newcomers in the final today <laughs> with Newcastle United Foundation. And we can hear from their coach now who's been talking to Hannah Cockcroft. It's Newcastle's first time here at the FA Disability Cup. Just how much does it mean to be here for the team? Oh, it's massive. I mean, we've only been a team for three years. We entered, this, we entered the cup this year thinking if we get through a couple of rounds, it'll be good. But then to get the final and beat local rivals, Northern Thunder in the first round, massive. Massive achievement. It's going to be a tough game today, though, isn't it? Uh, we're, under no, we're under no illusions what we're, what we're facing today. I mean, these are probably the most decorated team in the country. So, but we've got a game plan. Hopefully, if it works, we could, we could cause an upset. A game plan is always a good idea. They've got some very established players over on Aspire, but you've got a few wins under your belt as well. You were the coach for Northern Thunder, who were previous winners. Are you bringing that winning mentality today? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, well, I've got some very exciting players. I mean, the the three young lads, Ethan, Ollie, and Albie. I do I don't think there's three better players at their age, probably in world football. Never mind, never mind this country. So if they hit form, I think I think they could surprise a few people. Newcastle like to hand out a bit of banter online. I've heard. Uh, <laughs> have you been handing it out pre this match? Nah, not not after the past two uh, results. We've sort of kept it. We've sort of kept it under guard. But if 
if the result goes our way, we've got some uh, in, in surprise for them. Well, I'm kind of excited to see that. So very best of luck. I'll let you get back to the team. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Oh, look at that. You've got to love the Geordie lads. Oh. Lass is on to her here to support the team. As always, I'm sure that the Magpies are, are going to bring brilliant support for this final. How good is it to see the, the new kids on the block in this final? Oh, it's absolutely fantastic to have a new team in the final. As Jamie was rightly saying, uh, they've only been around a couple of years. But you know what it's like with Newcastle? They're always going to bring the noise regardless of the format. So they're going to make a hell of a racket and I think really cheer the, the team on today. Yeah, I think it was them that were making the noise when all the players came in the Geordie side. It was so loud. Um, tell us about the Newcastle team, you know. Uh, who are the standout players? I think, as Jamie said, it will be the, the young players that we'll need to look at. So uh, young Albie Morris, uh, Ollie Crawshaw, Ethan Fisher, all with, involved within uh, the talent programme at different levels mm -hmm. and all really exciting prospects and, and ones to look out for and hopefully future England internationals. Mm. And they've got Sam Smith as well, who we watched last year playing for Northern Thunder, now on the Newcastle team today and actually put in a really good performance last year. Let's hear now, though, from the opposition because Hannah is with Aspire's coach. Aspire have been here a few times before, John. How are they feeling ahead of today's game? Oh, we're very excited. We've had a great season. Um, won the league last, year, last weekend, so coming off a great high and hopefully... Another trophy tag to come. And I mean, aside from yourself, you are probably the star player. Who else are we looking at today? Uh, two of my guys have just got into the England team. So uh, Dan McClellan, who's only 14 years old, he's a great guy. He's going to be one for the future, definitely. And uh, Brad Bates has also been part of the England squad, so now he's back in it for the World Cup. So yeah. 2019 was the last time you were champions here. You've got a lot of support here with you today. We've heard it as you were coming in. How much would it mean to take that title home with you today? Massively, like when we came in 2019, we lost, so uh, we're coming to bounce back from that. And like I say, with all the support that we've got, we want to make them proud and you know, win the trophy home. Is it going to be a tough match? Hopefully, not, but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll do our best not to make it. Just go in there confident, and I'm sure you've got this. Good luck, and I'll let you get back to your warm up. Thank, Thank you. you. Much. Thank you. Thanks, Hannah. Aspire, one of the oldest power chair teams in the league, in the country, aren't they? Just how good are they at developing players? It's been something that they've done for for a long time now and obviously led very ably by John Bolden, England captain and possibly, in my view, the best player in the world. Wow. Wow, that is big praise um, there. And uh, we saw in the uh, CP final earlier um, between North East and Yorkshire um, and, um, in, and, and Norwich, that experience really played through. How much do you think experience is going to play a part in this final? Hugely, I think. Obviously, John's been here before. Brad Bates is one of his teammates who was here, a uh, previous and previous winner with West Bromwich Albion. Uh, they've been here and done it. So, in contrast to Newcastle, it'll be their first time. So, there may be some nerves, certainly from some of the younger players, but that'll be the challenge for them and the test to see how they cope. Talk to us more about what we can expect in the game and, and the technical side of it. Yeah, so obviously, it's a four side game and it's, it looks very different from other formats of, of football. Uh, it's a two-dimensional version of the game, so the ball stays on the floor. Mm. You'll have your goalkeeper and a player that plays in the centre and two wide players that are higher up. So you'll see uh, lots of triangles and hopefully lots of, of passing on a big pitch today. Um, and they'll look to just try and, and, and you'll see the chairs, the way that they position them and the angles that they uh, use to try and manipulate the direction of the ball. And is, a, is there a two-on-one rule as well? Yeah, that's tell, correct. So, tell us about that. So tackling in itself is, is one against one. So a, a second a party from the team can't come in within more than three metres of the ball. So it, it's to ensure that the game can flow and, and, the, and the ball can be passed around rather than it all becoming all ugly and like a scrum. And it's incredible how responsive those power chairs are. Are they specially made for power chair football? Yeah, so they're specifically designed for the game, built just to play football. You wouldn't want to sit in it all day because it wouldn't be the most comfortable. Yeah. But to be able to sit in it for a couple of hours with the uh, enhanced speed and acceleration, it, it just acts as whatever the player wants to do in their mind, that, that's the chair and it, it enables them to deliver and perform that skill. Well, you, you mentioned the, the, the speed. Sorry, yeah, Adi, yeah. I was going to say, but there's a lot of testing that, that goes on, isn't there, before, before the match and after the match? Yeah, so pre and post match, there's a speed test process where they need to be under a certain speed. Um, as you can see, they're making a lot of noise. We knew it was going to happen. Do you know what? Out of all the matches this weekend, this has had the most raucous crowd. That's because Newcastle are involved, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't do anything quietly. I wear the Jordies. <laughs> Sorry, what, what were you saying, 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So uh, pre-match, they need to be uh, 10 kilometers or under, and then post-match for a retest, they get a little bit of an allowance, 10% to be 11 kilometers, and that's the process that we pre and post-match for the for the chairs. And, and the physicality, you, you talked about not being able to to come into contact with each other when they tackle. You know, how big a part does that play in, in the game? So in theory, the game's meant to be non-contact, <laughs> but in theory. It's always going to be a little bit of contact, but that's managed and policed by the officials. So there is a little bit and it is allowed, but nothing excessive or dangerous, obviously, to protect the players uh, and, and to make sure that they're safe. And what's the top speed of the chairs? So they can get up to 10 kilometers and then maybe a little bit faster when they get warm, certainly in an environment like this today. What, what does this competition do, do for the sport? You can see the, the amazing support that, that we've got here for this final and this sort of coverage like live on TV as well. It's huge because it puts these players on a platform to show that they are elite athletes. They're fantastic players, hugely skillful, hugely technical. And it just means that they can obviously showcase their abilities on a wider scale. But it also means that people watching at home, if they're having to come to terms with a disability, physical impairment, actually, they can access football and they can become elite players too. So it's fantastic to be able to showcase our game at the highest level at an event like this. Now, Adam, we can't let you off the hook on this one. We've asked every pundit to give us a prediction yeah. on, on a score. No one's got it right yet so far. So what's your, what's your score predictions? I think both teams will go for it in an attacking context, but I think based on the recent results between them, I think Aspire will come out on top 3-1. Well, there's been a lot of talk on social media between the, the two as well, hasn't there? So a nice little rivalry building, so it should make for a competitive final, do you think? I, I think it's going to be fantastic, and hopefully it'll be a great example of the game at the highest level for everyone to appreciate. And I will be staying completely impartial, of course. It is Aspire against Newcastle United in the power chair final. We're going to hand you over to our commentary team here at the Futsal Hall. It is Ewan and Dan. Well, welcome to the Futsal Hall here at St George's Park where uh, certainly the spectators on the far side have brought the noise in this indoor arena for the power chair final between Aspire whose uh, traditional colours are white and red and the Newcastle United Foundation whose colours are black and white. The Newcastle uh, team left of halfway at the moment in the power chair. The power chair, quite uh, a, a low chair that's down, specially modified for this sport. It has uh, a bit of a ramp at the front, which is what the players use to hit the ball, the ball, uh, a larger ball than what you would be used to in your regular 11 aside football it's a size 9 ball so nearly double that of standing at football standard size and uh, the players in the power chairs really quite nifty the way they do it they're able to spin and manoeuvre get the momentum to hit the ball towards uh, either goal it's a smaller court within the main futsal court here at St George's Park it's a maximum of 30 metres long by 18 metres wide but there is still a goal area at each end and the uh, goals themselves aren't netted goals they are uh, made up of a pole either side that uh, is around five foot or so in height so the starting four for both teams. We'll start with Aspire, who are wearing white t-shirts with red sleeves. It's Tom Kelly in goal and then the uh, other three players, the outfield players, if you like, number seven, Dan McClellan, number eight, the captain, John Balding, and number 19, Brad Bates, the Newcastle United team, who have got uh, re uh, black and white on the back of their chairs with red names and numbers. Aaron Guthrie is in goal. And then the other three players, the captain, Ollie Crawshaw, number nine, Sam Smith, and number ten, Ethan Fisher. Plenty of spectators on the far side, plenty of flags as well. There's one flag from Aspire that's black and white and says, come on, Aspire. And that is behind a row of uh, four or five rows of Aspire supporters, all in red and white T-shirts. And then the Newcastle United flags 
plenty in number on the far side black and white uh, flags one saying Jordy's on tour another saying away the lads and away we go in this game a spy going from right to left from halfway and immediately dribbling the ball down the centre was uh, John Baldwin the captain An infringement though made by a spire meaning that it will be uh, a Newcastle ball from the edge of their goal area it's the first of uh, first half two lots of 20 minutes in this game as the three Newcastle players pass it between them in their own half try and break down the centre in halfway the ball gets wedged between the two chairs the chair of Sam Smith the number nine and the Spire captain number eight John Balding was able to steer it towards the far side and then a bit more movement to spin and hit in towards centre field it's deflected initially off Sam Smith for Newcastle but then breaks back for Aspire once again who come through the centre circle the captain driving them again John Balding gets towards the goal area two to be in front tries to square it for McClellan goes slightly behind he's able to get the chair round and from the corner whiz it back in towards the centre good pace to the start from Aspire as Newcastle trying to break over halfway again the ball is becoming wedge between two chairs both side onto one another in the centre circle but Balding comes out the stronger out of the two but it's a loose play from him he's able to then read the next one though but feels contact in his back which means it will be a uh, Newcastle ball in fact and Balding is adjusted to have been the guilty party blocking off an opponent so Ethan Fisher the number 10 he's in a green top the rest of the Newcastle players all in black and white shirts in their power chairs but uh, Fisher looking uh, to ultimately go left gets the one two and then immediately swings it out towards the near side but it's in front of the intended target and a stray and out for a uh, an aspire ball played through from halfway maybe an opportunity for uh, number 19 Bates now comes laterally and diagonally with it towards the far touch line still wedged between him and Crawshaw the Newcastle captain came last off Bates so the decision going Crawshaw's way and it will be a Newcastle ball which Fisher will swing diagonally towards the centre circle repelled immediately by Bolden it was going towards goal which meant that Aaron Guthrie the goalkeeper had to just come out and poke it away out towards the near side it does so efficiently then played from halfway by a spy it's a loose play Crawshaw initially is able to uh, get his chair on the ball but uh, then it moves out towards the far side and difficult for them to uh, keep in play breaks now for Bolding midway point of the Newcastle half most of the play so far has been in Newcastle territory the last touch coming off the uh, Crawshaw so it will be an aspire ball quickly taken down the line moved back towards halfway Bolding swung slightly early for that one so didn't catch great contact with it and it's uh, ricocheted out towards the near side it will be a Newcastle ball just short of halfway and it will be left again for Ethan Fisher to come across and take from halfway square ball across the halfway line then the next pass forward towards the, the Aspire half initially intercepted by Balding who closes down that clearance and then again the ball trapped between he and Fisher's chair as they both work out towards the far side and almost in the corner now last touch came off Balding and able to make anything of it and it will be a Newcastle ball level with their own uh, penalty area and it will be taken by Sam Smith who's dropped in on that far side the Newcastle left to uh, take a big swing at it able to get it as far as halfway repelled by Balding he's cleared it away a good pass out towards the near side they try and turn him towards the, the box there do aspire and able to do so keepers come a long way out to keep the move going though it's straight back into the Newcastle half Bates up to play across saved by the keeper but then ricochet back towards him off his own defender there keeper still has it left side of the area unsure really where to go with it Bolding closes down, it's on the far side now. Bolding has been able to get it. Tries to play it in towards the centre where the goal was momentarily vacant, but no uh, chairs there from an Aspire persuasion. Now maybe a Newcastle break over halfway. Chance here 
as the effort comes in it will be a goal kick rather than a corner last touch coming off the Newcastle player who tried to find a teammate but didn't really have anyone up there with him referee you know, all in black she plants the ball down for the goalkeeper Tom Kelly to uh, back to the ball there that was going to get a good swing round and try and get it up towards halfway just about manages to do so now going down the right hand side of Aspire just about kept in uh, breaking over halfway now it's gone out and it will be a Newcastle ball that makes plenty of support from those very black and white on the far side in the spectator stand Ethan Fisher swings and plays it square towards the centre circle back towards him now on the far side of the left he's moved back into uh, the midway point of the Newcastle half at slow pace but that speeds up now past one player can't get it past up Bolding though who is just anchoring in the centre of the Aspire half and commanding things at the moment he's then under pressure from Crawshaw but an infringement from Crawshaw means it will be an Aspire ball on halfway in the centre circle Bolding's in a central position swings from his left to right and uh, goes midway into the Newcastle half but there's an infringement off the ball by Hickey Crawshaw and so it will be an Aspire ball very central now in the Newcastle half slightly right of centre Balding swings and plays it diagonally across from McClellan there was a player on the line able to divert away for Newcastle McClellan again though square across this is the chance squared once again they're not shooting at the moment McClellan then spins and uh, drew the interception there from Fisher at the expense of an aspire corner on the near side there left to be taken by McClellan two to aim at in the box just the goalkeeper back for aspire McClellan comes round to move it towards the left corner of the area gets it back from Bolding keeps it on the byline Bolding again spins it this time towards the far side ricochets out off a Newcastle chair but still alive here if McClellan can get the shot away left corner of the area well blocked by Ethan Fisher who's just currently patrolling the middle of his own penalty area and doing so with great effect Bolding there trying to nudge it down the right knows he can't get a pathway so squares it across from McClellan instead takes a touch steadies himself left corner of the area now it allows the ball to go in towards the corner to allow the referee to uh, make sure the posts are in the right position the keeper just caught them there which is why there was a loud bang and uh, eventually coming off a Newcastle player defending well a spire ball restarting on the left hand side touchline near side as we look down the near side it goes another restart in favour of Aspire as McClellan cannoned it off Smith Back in towards the corner it goes, McClellan spinning it back towards the edge of the area. Bolding then trying to keep it alive. There was an infringement off the ball, but this time in favour of Newcastle, so a bit of respite for them. He played nine minutes or so. So midway through this first half of the power chair final at the FA Disability Cup in the Futsal Hall, the indoor arena with the blue court and the white lines on this slightly smaller court to the standard futsal pitch 30 metres by 18 metres the maximum size of a power chair court Newcastle restarting things with a dead ball on the edge of the centre circle in their own half it's uh, number 10 Ethan Fisher the green t-shirt on nudging it out towards the near side and getting it back he then spins it out towards the far side and once again it's going through him he goes long downfield keeper was able to stop it going through the post behind him and then a spy just clear out into touch it will now be a uh, it will now be Newcastle's ball on the edge of their own penalty area Fisher surveying his options he's got an option near side the right uses it as well gets it back off Smith number nine back towards halfway Newcastle is playing it between the three of them but then Smith is unable to make contact on it and he goes through the gate of him and bowling and out of play 
on the near side for uh, an Aspire ball on halfway, their left. It goes towards the edge of the centre circle. Back, to, uh, back towards bowling the taker. Trying to block off the progress of Sam Smith, who gets lodged in between uh, the ball and Bolding. Bolding gets away from him via the outside and is now on the edge of the centre circle. Finds McClellan wide left, tries to steer into the middle. Again, well placed is Fisher, deflects off him. Now the play on the near side for an Aspire ball on halfway. Bolding gets it back, quickly steers onto it and then the acceleration and the brake speed quite quick with these chairs, they quickly speed up and then they're able to slow down to uh, bring the ball under their control. Holding edge of the centre circle, moves it down the left hand side, McClellan first time across, can he find his teammate? He can but it's just wider than near post on that right hand side, the far side of the area, slightly uh, stretching onto it, couldn't quite wrap the end of the chair around the ball to steer it on target but uh, Aspire certainly the ones knocking on the door Fisher will take from into the uh, penalty area towards the near side Smith trying to look forward Bolding gets something on it you know, obviously lots of squeaking with the wheels on the hard uh, futsal surface in this indoor court goes out eventually for an Aspire ball in the Newcastle half just uh, short of halfway down the line it goes McClellan again trying to play it across square breaks for Bolding on the edge of the area trying to find a pass either side here Bolding can't quite move it out towards the left but McClellan will get the balls it slowly rolls towards him maybe an option to cross it for McClellan now thinking about his options has to spin it back for Bolding who goes in toe to toe really there with Smith breaks back out on the near side for Bolding he can't quite bring it under his spell with that first touch it ricochets out for a Newcastle ball on the near side it's midway inside their own half on their right and Smith again will leave it for Ethan Fisher the number 10 to take command swings at it, moves it towards halfway, Crawford on the turn, tries to move it to Smith, it's a bit of a loose one though, in the centre circle, and Bolding comes away with it, Bolding the ball just rolling down the left side of his chair, tries to move it across towards the near side, his left, gets it back at the second attempt, after it came off a Newcastle chair, and he's uh, now locked into battle with Sam Smith, Bolding tries to turn him, and goes inside, just about manages, the ball not with uh, a great deal of pace right at the moment, McClellan then steers it back in towards the centre, McClellan again wide left, level the box, tries to nudge it back towards the edge of the area, but again an interception there from Sam Smith, and Smith slowly inching towards halfway, but doesn't go beyond it, Bolding again, Keane winning it back, and now it's played across the area, chance from McClellan, saved by the goalkeeper, back out for Bolding, and it wasn't a powerful effort, but it was blocked, and then a third effort comes in, Bolding again on the rebound, saved by a combination of the goalkeeper and Fisher and eventually goes out for a corner on the far side the right for Aspire who are knocking on the door strongly now second by Bates towards the end of the air it goes touched off for McKellen back for Bolding again who moves it far side the right so not a great angle for a shot can they get it back in towards the middle once again Bates tries to nudge it towards the edge of the area. Newcastle in decent shape, but the ball was dead, and it was an Aspire player reacting quickest. However, it was loose as it was played backwards, and now Newcastle break towards the halfway point. Bolding again, very difficult to get past, and he's turned defence into a tactic. Allen finding Bates. Bates gets towards the right corner, spins it back towards the edge. Bolding got the contact on it, blocked pretty much on the line. Now McClellan again, left hand side, spinning and twisting and just uh, moving the ball into the direction of the defender, Ethan Fisher, who got the last touch. And it will be an Aspire ball near side the left midway point of the Newcastle half. McClellan steers it in towards the middle. Fisher beats Bolding to it and uh, beats it long and away into the Aspire half. So Aspire will start with a dead ball on the near side there left but it will be from deep you know, all the Newcastle players they're happy to be inside their own half and just defend any balls that go forward into their territory 
So another restart, this time just short of halfway. McClellan on his left side. Moves it down towards Bolding. Gets it back again, McClellan. Just over the halfway line now. Newcastle in good defensive shape. Bolding coming from the centre circle. Goes on the outside of one player. And maybe has a square option here if he can squeeze it through. Just about does. Fisher spun around with great speed and clattered into the opponent to get that ball long and away. But the goalkeeper recycles it. And he's back down the Aspire right. This time Fisher with a bit too much uh, zest as he uh, made that challenge. And so it will be a restart and uh, it will be an Aspire ball far side there right. Just in front of the spectator area. Holding will uh, take this one nudges it down that far side the right of the area Jen tries to put it back towards the edge of the box but no could do that out of play it goes on the near side and it will be a uh, Newcastle ball just inside their own half on their right hand side it is opposite the spectator side of the futsal hall it gets towards halfway Newcastle trying to break into uh, the Aspire half but ultimately it came off a uh, uh, Aspire player last, so the referee they're disagreeing with the assistant uh, who had flagged the other way. And so the assistant plants that large size nine ball down, and it's uh, Fisher nudging it down this near corner, then gets it back towards the edge, tries to swivel for a shot on his left side. It's blocked, but then rolls out in front of the spectators for another Newcastle ball on the halfway. Assistant referee with his flag in his right hand plants the ball down. And now Ethan Fisher in that green top. The rest of the Newcastle players all in black and white. But Fisher swings it from his left side, square into the centre circle. Fisher gets it back. First time looks forward, but blocked by Aspire, who are away on the break. Left side of the area, McClellan. Heavy first touch, though, runs in towards the goalkeeper. McClellan falls wide here. Uh, but in fact, will happily take the corner. That's why he was leaving it. So uh, near side, opposite the spectators. McClellan will have a corner on the Aspire left. Number seven on the back of his chair. He just nudges it back to the left corner of the box. Bolding closed down by the goalkeeper there. Who came out quickly did Guthrie. Guthrie still out to challenge the spinning ball that's loose on the edge of the area. On the Aspire left hand side. And eventually Guthrie has got the last touch on it. And immediately accelerates back towards his own goal. And thanks Fisher for covering him while he was uh, absent. And the square ball inside from Aspire breaks on the edge of the centre circle for Bolding for Aspire. He's the key man in the middle of the pitch and the ball is rammed in between two chairs. He looks to continue with the break in towards the area. It's uh, blocked by the defender, then a clatter between Bolding and uh, Guthrie. And then eventually a decision has gone in favour of Newcastle. Bolding with that infringement there. And then on the edge of the area, Fisher will uh, take. Takes a moment, squares it out towards the near side, then gets it back again to Guthrie. Tries to use every effort he can to move the ball towards the far direction, but interception comes in from Aspire. We uh, have it now on the left corner of the area. Opportunity. Perhaps for him to knock it back as the ball just sits still on the touchline. Bates spins and tries to play it across the box, but it's blocked by Fisher again, who is the man who won't be moved at the moment. Back there for Newcastle. He's been a very tough nut to crack indeed. As Aspire still look for the opening goal of the game. We're into the final minute of this first period. And it's, uh, it's on the edge of the centre circle. Bolding closed down. Maybe a chance for Newcastle to break here. The keeper's had to come a long way to meet it does so as well but there was an infringement that was made by Aspire that means Newcastle have the uh, free hit just beyond the centre circle in the Aspire half there is a shooting opportunity perhaps here for Ethan Fisher and in fact will leave the ball and wants to take up a more attacking option he's let someone else take this instead it will be the captain Ollie Crawshaw Crawshaw spins and hits it towards the edge of the area will it break loose for him again it does but uh, then there was a foul this time by the Newcastle player in the box. So 
Now, Aspire quickly take bit two over Zellers, though, as they go beyond the intended target and out of play on the near side for a Newcastle ball. Just on the near touchline, midway inside their own half. On the, uh, on the right, as far as they're concerned, Fisher nudging it towards halfway. And move towards the edge of the box. Robustly cleared away by Aspire. And there was a clearance that was going on target. It was saved by the keeper. Broke to halfway. That is the end of the first half. Both sets of players speed off towards their respective dugouts. Newcastle players very quickly getting in a huddle around their coaching staff on the near side. Left of halfway as we look. The Aspire team a bit slower across, but they're all in the huddles now. Welcome back. Next Saturday, WWE heads to London for the first time in over two decades as the biggest superstars go head-to-head -head in WWE Money in the Bank. Uh, that's at the O2 Arena. The event is live at 8 o'clock on BT Sport Box Office. Here in the power chair final, it is goalless at half time between Newcastle United Foundation and Aspire. Seven Oaks power chair manager Adam McAvoy is alongside us. And just how pleased do you think Newcastle will, will be, Adam, at half time, given recent results between these two? Yeah, I certainly think they'll be delighted with that. As you say, based on recent results, it's been very one sided. And you can see that they've set up to try and frustrate and deny the space in the, around the top of the, the penalty area there. So far, so good. And I think it'll just be a case of maintaining that and the concentration will be key mm. for the next 20 minutes. I mean, they've literally parked the power chair, haven't they? Or mm. the power chairs in front of the goal line. Um, I mean, talk to me about Aspire. Will they, will they be frustrated? I mean, they have created chances. We saw Brad Bates's chance. Um, but will they be frustrated not to have broken through? Yeah, I would imagine so. I would think with the way, with, with the chances that they've created and certainly how they've tried to pass the ball, but they won't be surprised that that's the, the way that Newcastle would have tried to have, have set up to try and frustrate them. So it'll probably just be not happy, but we've got to keep working along the same lines and, and trying to hit the gaps. And this was a great move, though, isn't it? it? It's a shame it didn't end in a goal, but that's one of the things with power football is the control and skill to pass the ball around and generate that power of free passes. Yeah, it's a great example of the ball. Actually, each pass was from the ball going behind the chair 
and each player has, has spun and rotated round. And it was just a case of not, maybe not being quite in the right position or the timing of the spin. Mm -hmm. But a great example of, of utilising the ball and making the pitch as big as possible and to get those triangles going. And then they had that triple chance, didn't they? John Balding had a couple of attempts in that. It was like pinball at that point. Yeah, it was one of those where sometimes you have that where it might bounce off an opponent's chair for the first time to set yourself up purposely for a second or a third chance. Talk to us about the aura of John as yeah. well, because there, there just seems to be that respect out there from, from every single player to, towards him. I think that's something that's across the, the National League with the players that play against John. Everyone knows how skilled and talented he is, and it's always a battle. You're always trying to prove yourself against, as I said, the best player in the world, but he does seem to have that aura, as you say, and it's just how can you manage to, to beat him, and it's, mm. it's a very hard challenge. Now, Newcastle, you know, Plan, plan A is working, they've stopped a goal, but in order to win this, they're going to have to score a goal themselves. How are they going to change things in order to score for themselves? I don't know. I think it might be at the moment they're happy with things as they are, and it will be a case of just can we try and catch them on the break. So with Ethan Fisher playing centrally, possesses great power and great accuracy. If he can play a ball wide to one of the wide players and try and catch them on a, on a break in a, in a 2v1 situation, that might be the situation, but I certainly think they'll still try to deny the space and frustrate Aspire for the next five to ten minutes at least before trying to catch them. The last two finals have gone to penalties, which would be a great spectacle for, for the great crowd we have here in the futsal hall. Can you see that happening again, Adam? Potentially. I mean, I hope not because it would be great for, for the audience, for everyone at home watching to see goals and to see the, the quality of the play. So I'm optimistic there'll be a goal. I've got to be positive, but um, it, could, it could well do. And, well, and technically, um, what is it about John Baldwin's play that makes him so good? His understanding and his anticipation. He's like a chess player. He always seems to be two or three moves ahead mm. of opponents. So you can see that the way he positions himself and he's waiting and anticipating what the opponent's going to do even before that they've actually executed what it is. So then he's trying to, to act on that and, and go from there and launch a counter-attack. He's always in the right place at the right time. You can see as well his leadership skills there, trying to drive his team on. Whatever the Newcastle game plan is, though, it is working at half time. It is goalless, and so far they've kept Aspire at bay. Can they keep it up in the second half?
Welcome back. There is women's international cricket tomorrow as West Indies and Ireland take on each other in the first one day international. That's at 2.45 on BT Sport 1 here at St. George's Park. It is half time in the power chair final between Newcastle United Foundation and Aspire. It is goalless after a real game of chess in that first half. Let's see who comes out on top in the second. It's back to your commentary team, Ewan Dunlop and first Dan O'Hagan. Welcome back to St George's Park. This is the futsal hall for the power chair final between Aspire and Newcastle United. Newcastle United with the black and white on the back of their power chairs going from right to left in this second half and they take the kick off and immediately are forced back into their own corner by that pressure from the Aspire captain John Balding has been a really strong anchor in the middle of their team and it will be an Aspire restart from the near side the right spun back towards the edge of the area it's uh, Balding against the next touch on it he was slightly behind his intended target Bates Rolls the wrong side of the dead ball line, so will be a Newcastle ball, which uh, Ethan Fisher will take. Ball on his left side, he puts the ball through the centre circle. Bolding is able to come across and challenge initially. Crawshaw then left something in on him, but Bolding still has possession. Then Crawshaw back in again, snapping in, and this time it will be a foul in favour of Aspire from the centre circle on this blue court the indoor arena here at the futsal hall at St George's Park as it's uh, played in towards the edge of the box return ball is uh, there Bates tried to spin to shoot Fisher had already got himself in the way again back there for Newcastle uh, ball now loose and moved out towards the near side moved back centre field once again and Fisher that deep line defender sat almost in front of his goalkeeper going to pick the ball up and uh, try and come forward with it. Bolding has wedged his chair next to that of Fisher as the two of them move their way closer to the spectators. And uh, right in front of the assistant referee who uh, waves his flag in favour of an Aspire restart. Bolding taking it in towards the edge of the area. Uh, Fisher is able to get contact on it, which means that Newcastle could maybe break on a two on one. It's on the far side of the right, just beyond the halfway line. Bolding is able to, again, get his chair right up to his opponent and uh, nick the ball away and then it's McClellan trying to steer it back in from the left hand side he doesn't quite manage on that occasion comes back out to him but he's a bit deeper towards the halfway line he got the last touch on the ball as well after his challenge from Sam Smith for Newcastle so it's a Newcastle ball inside their own half Groshaw receives it in the centre circle Bolding tries to dispossess him looks like he's succeeded as well gets towards the right side of the area there does Bolding and he's uh, moving towards uh, the byline here. Can he creep back from wide? He tries to. Shot on the turn. He's well blocked. McClellan from a central position hits it. And with a couple of Newcastle chairs and fizzes out towards the near side where it will be an Aspire ball. 19 puts it back towards the edge of the area. Sam Smith getting the contact on it for Newcastle to divert it from the penalty box and out to play on the near side for an Aspire ball just in their own half. On their right, Bolding. McClellan was free and poked it forward to the right corner. Played back for McClellan, left side shot, straight down the middle of the goal. So easy for the goalkeeper to uh, get his chair behind it. And it's uh, not out of the Newcastle half yet, though, as they battle for it near the halfway line on the near side. Holding up against Smith. Bolding still going for it and getting the breakaway on the edge of the centre circle as well. Immediately closed down by Crawshaw. It comes out wide and maybe a chance for the spare men to be found on the other side. McClellan's shot on the spin. Another strong block by Ethan Fisher who has been there throughout so far to deny every Aspire opportunity on goal. I'm going to just taking a moment to disentangle Bolding and Fisher who were jostling together in the box ahead of this restart and then the ball was aimed towards Bolding who throws his head back and looks up to the roof of the Futsal Hall and after realising he probably should have controlled that he bypassed him and goes out for a uh, Newcastle restart to be taken from the edge of the area by Ethan Fisher in that green t-shirt 
The rest of the Newcastle players all in uh, black and white. Opts to play a low angle ball out towards the far touchline before the return ball he played to him. Then he tries to slip it down the right hand side. Just a bit too far in front of Ollie Crawshaw. Wasn't quick enough to uh, speed down that far touchline and get towards the corner to meet the ball. But encouragement from the Newcastle coaching bench and the spectators on the far side for the idea. There's nothing else. As now Newcastle are battling for it on the edge of the penalty area. Bolding trying to come away with it against Crawshaw, not letting it up. Crawshaw still battling away here. Bolding to his left and Crawshaw to the right of the ball. They're both moving it out towards the far side and the wheels screeching on this futsal court. Bolding now coming in from the left. Midway point of the Newcastle half. Not much room to work with at all. And Crawshaw keeping him for company and not allowing him any movement at all from half wide. Crawshaw going to come down the left of the centre circle and he might have won that battle you know Bolding now is the one back having to do defensive work both of them very composed in their faces lots of concentration as Newcastle going to the aspire half there but now it breaks away and Bolding on halfway just to move it towards the near side the infringement was made in favour of Newcastle and uh, well for the first time in the second half it feels as though things are going the way of Newcastle somewhat they will restart things on halfway left of the centre circle. Square ball into the centre circle. Crawshaw got the contact on it. Bates comes across and wins uh, wins it for his team. And uh, again, Newcastle doing the closing down. Aspire putting it out of uh, play via a Newcastle chair. Holding down that far touch line this time, it's Crawshaw coming across to cut off the pass. And it will be another restart for Aspire on this uh, near side there, right. About midway between the halfway line and the uh, Newcastle goal. Holding now trying to win it back again. It's him against Crawshaw once more. Might break on the edge of the area here. Could be chance for a shot. Fisher comes across, holding in there. Moves out towards the left in McClellan. Low effort towards uh, the front post. Saved by the keeper. Comes out towards the edge of the area again. Crawshaw blocking off Bolding as the two of them manoeuvre towards the near side. Bolding wants to get the ball more central, but Crawshaw has got it back off him. And now the two speed away inside the Aspire half. Bolding tries to cover the track that Crawshaw's trying to go down, and Bolding wins it as well. Now he's got a couple of options ahead of him. Bolding decides to take it himself over halfway. Fisher across to stop the pass to McClellan. Did so successfully. Uh, an Aspire ball it will be now on the far side in front of the spectators it's folding down the line McClellan steering it across towards the edge of the area Smith then getting his chair there ahead of uh, Bolding but Bolding no rest from him as ever now locking horns with Sam Smith the two of them have the ball trapped between their wheels out towards the far side Bolding trying to get on the outside of Smith who's not giving an inch away at all all still dead between the two chairs. They're just working out their next move. Still rocking back and forth. Smith trying to make sure the ball doesn't squirm behind him. And he does now as Balding gets away. Towards the edge of the area. Maybe a chance for Balding. Moved it out wide left. Couldn't find McClellan. Who had decent pace on that ball to maybe fire a shot in there. Yeah, it wasn't quite happening for him though. And now McClellan will take the restart wide left. Midway point of the uh, Newcastle half down the line it goes Bolding gets a touch on it may have uh, hit the upright there the keeper certainly had it covered anyway it was a tame effort but now the ball rolls towards halfway Fisher can't advance any further than that because McClellan's on his case of course the ball near side but Fisher's got beyond him and he's got an option either side to aim at Crawshaw's first touch wasn't the best and Bolding was able to read it inside the Aspire half near side the Newcastle left Bolding still working to try and find a way out doesn't quite might break for Fisher shot saved by the keeper broke for him well just a meter or so outside the area central position and a rare effort on goal there from Newcastle certainly had their supporters purring on the far side but the uh, loose ball after that block came out towards the near side Newcastle ball it will be from a dead start position 1-2 between Fisher and Crawshaw. Fisher now facing off with Bolding. Bolding may have uh, the better of him here as they wriggle down the near side. It last came off of Bolding, so it will be a Newcastle ball just over halfway near side 
their left. Fisher to take, just uh, eyeing up his options ahead of him. Cannons it forward. Bates got the block in, might break through McClellan, through one on one with the goalkeeper. Gets the contact on it, meets the keeper in the area. Keeper comes out on top. Aaron Guthrie for Newcastle. Fans to come almost towards halfway. He's got covered from Fisher as Bolding tackles the keeper now. It's another one on one, uh, but uh, enough Newcastle defenders have got back to meet that. And now the referee deciding there was an off for the ball infringement in favour of Aspire. But uh, Newcastle perhaps breathing a collective sigh of relief there that it wasn't anything but more serious. So it'll be a shot dead central on the edge of the area and the uh, line that the referee is marking out in terms of the distance between the ball and the defenders is almost as far back as the goal line so uh, almost feels like a, a penalty situation this as Bates will spin and uh, try and find a teammate which was able to hit the ramp of the chair didn't really go goalwards though and Newcastle now try and bring it towards halfway Smith battling away with Bates on the far side, they go over halfway. Smith to get past the first challenge, but then Bolding reads the second pass back towards Fisher, who was waiting on halfway. Fisher did get a touch on it, but it will be a uh, ball for Aspire as it goes out on that far side in front of the spectators. Down the line it goes. Bates effort. That was a good effort uh, on the turn, despite the fact the angle wasn't the best, but the keeper saves it. And then it looks like a penalty has been awarded for Aspire there. On that rebound, the referee did not like what she saw from Ethan Fisher, who will go in goal to try and save this, but what a chance for Aspire to go ahead. It will be the number eight, the Aspire captain, John Bolding, who will take. He's going to approach the ball with the ball to his left. He now reverses backwards and will try and spin around, sends Fisher the wrong way, and Aspire have got the opening goal of this final John Balding no mistake Fisher moved his chair to the left but Balding went the other way and uh, they're dancing away on the far side the Aspire supporters most of them in their red tops it is 1-0 to them and Newcastle make the restart and uh, they get uh, the decision. There'll be a substitution now as well. The assistant referee raises his flag above his head to signify it's uh, a substitution coming now. Just uh, waiting to see which numbers will be replaced here. Number eight comes on. So number eight is Lee Armstrong. He's on for the goalkeeper, Aaron Guthrie. And uh, number nine, Sam Smith, also replaced by number five, Albie Morris so on they go and Albie Morris everyone uh, mostly with the uh, black and white chairs even the Aspire players but Albie Morris a bit more distinguishable with the uh, orange frame to his ramp near his wheel arch so uh, let's see what Newcastle can do they've got a decision now on halfway on their right hand side and it might be an opportunity to uh, create a chance that gets them back into the game. Not long left at all for Newcastle to try and level things up. It's an astray pass from Ollie Crawshaw. Goes out on the far side. And it's uh, an Aspire ball on halfway. Far side there left. Down the line it goes from bowling the goal scorer. Then played back ball centrally. Behind the intended target Bates though. And he has to concede that that will go out for a Newcastle ball. Near side there, left on halfway. Fisher squaring it for Crawshaw, the captain, in the centre circle. Weak contact on it from him. But offers it to Albie Morris, but Morris is dispossessed by Bates, who reacted quicker. But now Fisher again. Can't quite manoeuvre the ball out wide left, though. His coaches were telling him to play a different pass, which uh, you could tell by his face reaction. He acknowledges probably would have been a better option, but... Uh, He's back on defensive duty now near his penalty area because Aspire have it on halfway. They move it down this near right touch line. Fired across. Fisher's in the right place again to deflect the ball away. Bolden reacting next to it. Gets the contact on the ball and it then ricochets off a Newcastle chair. So it will be an Aspire ball near side the right. 
there and Bolding moves it down the line, gets it back from Bates again. Bolding trying to encroach closer and closer. Crawshaw got a slice of the ball on it. And then again the uh, ball becomes wedged between the two chairs as they move back and forth on the near side. The last tip's coming off an Aspire player this time around. So a bit of respite for Newcastle and maybe a chance to have some more possession. Fisher take midway inside his own half near side the left aims it towards halfway cannons back inside in the middle of the Newcastle half Fisher reacting quicker than McLennan McLennan on the street here as Fisher loops the drive past him Bolding then gets a touch on the ball but the referee had already blown a whistle and it's a decision that goes in favour of uh, Aspire Ball moves forward all the way through and it's gone in. Well, how on earth did that happen? It was from some distance out, direct from the dead ball. Some frustrated Newcastle player talking to the referee, but through it went. It took a deflection off a Newcastle chair, and it really uh, unsighted the substitute goalkeeper Lee Armstrong. It goes far into the corner. The referee now having a conversation with the assistant referee. Uh, that's in the penalty area, and. Uh, He's nodding and seems happy to give the goal so the Aspire supporters are able to resume their celebration. Oh, Balding, credited with it. He's the one that fired it into the mixer. It did take a nick on the way through and, uh, well, really, wrong side of the goalkeeper. Newcastle passing the ball with a lot more pace and zest now, but maybe a bit too much as it cannons off one of the teammates and Ricky shake back towards the centre circle. Locked in battle now, Bolding and Crawshaw. The two captains giving everything for the cause. Bolding spinning in uh, centre field and moving it forward. The keeper for Aspire was well placed to stop the ball going through any further. The ball now won near the halfway line. It's a uh, good one to play by Newcastle, but it's back into their own half. And then Fisher was closed down and panicked. He got a touch on the ball that was unintentional. It takes it out for a corner on the near side for Aspire. And I think we're soon going to make a change, but not just yet. And it's swung in. Goes all the way through towards the far side of the area. McClellan's effort blocked well by the substitute keeper Armstrong. And now another substitution being signalled by the officials. And this time it's Aspire making the changes. Just waiting to see uh, who will come on. Two players getting ready, and it looks like the players have been replaced by number seven, Dan McClellan. With spectacles on, and uh, Brad Bates, number 19, he's off as well. Number two, Sally McNeil, she's got spectacles on, and she's on to the court, and as is Jordan Williams, the number 10. McNeil from the left hand side. Down the line, it goes all the way through and out, and it will be uh, a Newcastle ball. Newcastle need to try and find a goal sometime soon. They bring the ball towards halfway. Struggling to go any further than that though. Williams gets the next touch on it. And Bolding's wide left. He cannons it down the line. Interception. Uh, interception, should I say, coming from Ollie Crawshaw. Takes it out. And it's now a, uh, a spire ball. Bolding spins and squares it in field. It breaks loose. Crawshaw for Newcastle. Trying to bring it forwards. Just clatters into Bolding there. They're locked on halfway with one another. Fisher then steers out towards the near side. Right, keep that for Aspire, put into a bit of panic and just moves it out on the near side for what will be a Newcastle ball and a promising attacking position near side there left. Probably closer to the goal than it is the halfway line. And moves down the line towards the byline. Fisher then gets it back, tries to cannon it in. It's a Newcastle player and ricochets out towards the near side. Bad luck really, uh, because it will be an Aspire ball 
Midway in their own half. Williams squares it inside for Bolding. Deft tips to take it away from Crawshaw. Fisher now goes to meet him in the centre circle. Bolding just eyeing him up at the moment and then trying to drive it around him. But Fisher well placed. It's been a good match between those two. McNeil now tries to uh, get past Fisher. He comes away with it. Fisher though stops as the ball breaks in halfway. He knows there's no defenders around him. He's able to reverse and guard that ball down to the left side of his chair midway inside his own half gets past the first opponent and tries to knock it out of the centre circle gets it back off Crowshaw Crowshaw again Crowshaw once more countdown on on the far side as the uh, shot came in blocked by the goalkeeper Newcastle there with a, another chance as the referee blows her whistle and uh, Aspire have won this final by two goals to nil a brace from John Bolding the captain one from the penalty spot the other was another dead ball goal from uh, much further out that took a deflection on the way through received Darren Guthrie and went to the back of the net great victory for them the Newcastle United uh, supporters on the far side they stand up in their black and white top to their team uh, the Aspire supporters all in red they're on their feet as well both sets of players Trading handshakes after a magnificent final, which finishes Aspire 2. Congratulations to Aspire. They are the power chair champions here at the Disability Cup 2023, beating Newcastle United Foundation 2-0. It was a great game, closely fought as well. It was still goalless at half-time, but John Bolding showing all his quality and experience at the double. Addy alongside me and also Adam McAvoy watching with me. Sum, sum up that, that second half performance, particularly from John Balding. It's, he's the man, isn't he? So again, Newcastle tried to implement that pressure, but just as I said at halftime, it would be concentration that would be the difference and just two mistakes were, were key to, to the result of the game. I mean, talk to us about those, those mistakes. Uh, the first one was um, Ethan Fisher. Yeah, what happened there to, to, to give away the penalty? It was just unfortunate. Obviously, he's defending the box with his teammate and he looks to reverse and, and move backwards, unaware that, that Brad Bates was behind him and he, he catches him in the middle of the chair and it's a contact foul and it's, it's a direct result, it's a penalty. I mean, there was no malice in it. It was just a mistake, wasn't it? Absolutely. Nothing at all. Just switched just off for awareness. a second. Very much so, but... As we say, it, at this level, it's those fine margins that make the difference. And then, of course, John doesn't miss from there. Look at that for you, Dad. That, that's a lovely moment. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's fantastic. You know, John Senior was, was John's rock. And, and to have lost him a few months ago, it's been really tough for John. But he seems to have found a fire in recent months that's obviously now drove him onto league and, and cup success. And I know his dad will be really proud. I'm sure, it, sure he would be. That, that's wonderful. He has that, that lovely picture yeah. on, on his shirt there today and, and, and has done it for his dad today. And of course, when he got that penalty, it just felt it was only going one way because <laughs> yeah. he doesn't miss from there. Over 440 goals in 13 seasons. He's prolific. It's just someone who's been around for such a long time, like they said on commentary, been playing for longer than some of the opposition players have been alive. So that's just an example of, of the man and his experience and his abilities. But he also had a, a great battle against Oli Crawshaw. The, he's 14 years old uh, for Newcastle. And those two in the midfield, there was a, it's a great tussle to watch, wasn't it? Absolutely. Oli is a super young prospect in the England development squad and, and making great strides. And almost a, a, a healthy disrespect <laughs> when he comes up against John of, yes, I know who you are, no but fear. no fear whatsoever. And that was a great example of that in the second half. What a personality from him to captain that team, age just 13, and he put in a great performance. We'll look back on both teams' performances after the break. We'll have more analysis as well with Adam and the trophy presentation on the way next. We've also got lots that coming up on BT Sport Major League Baseball. It's the Cubs against the Cardinals. That's today over on one. World Senior Darts and Masters is over on four as well. It's day two there in MotoGP. It's live from Assen with Checker flag that's up next on two and we will be bringing you the final final here at the disability cup and it is the death final between Farsley celtic and st john's deaf fc much anticipated that one we kick that off a bit later on the 3g pitch but after the break we'll have more reaction to that win for aspire there there is 
the match winner, John Bolding. He was at the double today. Two goals for him. And we'll see Aspire awarded the trophy when we come back. Newcastle's Ethan Fisher reversing into Brad Bates there to concede a penalty in the power chair final and John Bolding not missing with that penny. Then got his second goal of the match in a 2-0 victory for Aspire. And now, who is with Hannah? John, you kept us waiting a little bit there, didn't you? Did that penalty just give you a little bit of, I guess, confidence? Because we were in the final minutes. I know, uh, we did we did make it hard work for ourselves, definitely. And... Um... Obviously, the final, once we scored, it took a bit of pressure off and allowed us to open up a little bit. And obviously, they came out a lot more than what they did in the first half. So, yeah, we got there in the end, but, yeah, we made it hard work. Did you expect the final to be that difficult? Nah, not on previous <laughs> results against them, but they've done well, you know. Uh, they changed their way of playing to obviously restrict us from creating many chances. Uh, I think we had maybe had one or two in the first half, but we didn't take them away. And so, yeah, we knew in the second half they'd come out a little bit more. Um, and to be fair, we actually spoke about the goalkeeper being a bit reckless in the middle and so if we can get a penalty uh, it would work out well. Right. so yeah it happened all worked out well in the end and now you qualify for the Champions League you're off to the World Cup there's plenty more to look forward to yeah we're looking forward to the World Cup next um, obviously that's in October so uh, club stuff finishes for a little while and we focus on England um, can't wait obviously the lads uh, the, the squad got announced a couple of weeks ago and so we're buzzing for that and um, yeah hopefully put on a good show and come back with a the World Cup. 
And I have to mention the family and friend support you had there and, and of course, your T-shirt. You must be so, so proud that you just managed to pull that win off. It was, and it's like, I lost my dad last year and um, he followed me everywhere, you know. And so this is for him, this whole season's for him. But obviously the fans behind us, uh, family, friends, we couldn't be here without them. So uh, massive thanks to them and obviously they continue to support us wherever we go. We've got some big plans to go out and celebrate with them all now. Going out for a team meal, I think, but... Uh, Maybe not a Jack Grealish, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, I get, yeah, I guess. Genuinely. I, I'm all emotional now looking at you. Congratulations. That was absolutely fantastic. I'm going to let you get back to your family, your friends, your team. You've literally brought the whole team of Spire here. And, I mean, what does it feel like for you to have a, a crowd of this size? Because this is the biggest one we've seen at the Power Chair Football Final. And it seems to be getting bigger every year. Yeah, that, exactly that. It gets bigger every year because more people buy into the sport, more people buy into the teams. We've got so much fans and there's many, many parents and carers and stuff from other teams here supporting us. And that means a lot, you know, like obviously they enjoy the way that we play. Um, hopefully we've gotten a bit of a show from today. Um, but yeah, we couldn't, like I said earlier, we couldn't be here without them and uh, we do this for them. I know that they are so, so proud of you. Congratulations and I'll let you go and be with them. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, and we're all feeling quite emotional here as well because John, a, a lot of people thought he, he may step back from, from power chair after losing his dad because his, his dad was with him at every single match there, every step of the way. But actually, he, he's taken his game to another level in, in tribute to his father. Absolutely. The, the bond that they had as, as father and son was, was so tight and, and John Senior was everywhere and, and a real pillar of the power check community so the fact that John's now used that as as fuel and fire for him is is a credit to them both of the, the Bolden family and, and to the team and, and congratulations to them and, and talking about the team tactics it was fascinating to hear how Bolden talked about how they targeted the uh, Newcastle goalkeeper saying that he was reckless and it was potential that they could get something off of him I think that's probably from previous battles in, in the National League, so they've come up together 1v1 in there, a lot of scrapping, and, and I think Fisher was probably, I think he received a yellow card, so I think that was probably at the forefront of their minds, and it was, as we say, just that lapse of concentration which gave Aspire the, the kickstart that they needed. And he also talked about Newcastle changing their tactics as well, and they put in a much better performance against Aspire than they have done in, in recent games. So there's lots of positives for, for them to take out of this. Massively. I, I'm sure Jamie will be happy with a lot of the, the defensive uh, traits that they, they put into practice. And they've got a young team. They're only going to get better, more experienced, and they will be a team that competes at this level in the National League for many years to come. And what's your um, thoughts on, on other teams? Do you think, could you see your team, for instance, get into an FA Cup final one day? That would be fantastic. I, as much as I love speaking to you both, I would love to be in the dugout in future years, hopefully working with my team at a final. It would be an honour. And that means that Aspire qualify for the Champions League. Tell us about that, Adam. Absolutely. So as John said, they've got the World Cup next year in Sydney, but the following year... It'll be there for the Champions League up against the best teams from, from across Europe and something that they, they've never won so that they will be really, really desperate to want to do well in. What an achievement that is and what an achievement it is here to win the Disability Cup. They're, they're starting the presentations here. So let's rejoin our commentators. It's back to Ewan and Dan. The medal presentation taking place now, just away to our right-hand side, there's a large arched plinth with the FA Disability Cup logo and the tagline, here for glory, all green and black branding with the winner's banner just in front uh, of them so that all the players can uh, get in front of it, the winning players of course, and uh, lift the trophy. For now it's the officials who are getting their medal for their participation in this final all the officials in black all four of them and they're walking off towards the near side after taking the small black case with the medal inside now the Newcastle players in their power chairs come up towards the ceremony spot where they will take their runners up medals each getting a handshake and uh, their medals in the small case 
which is open for them to look at. It's a proud achievement, despite the fact that they came 